Come on, nerds, get your news here. It's time for the nerdy news. Hey, Nerdyverse, I'm Matt Barnes, and here's what's going on in pop nerddom. This last weekend at the box office, oh, who gives a crap? Nothing good happened last weekend. All anyone cares about is Rogue One opens tomorrow night, and I can't freaking wait. The reviews are in, and they're excellent. It's got 84% on Rotten Tomatoes right now, but the reviewers who I tend to agree with love it. And as far as I'm concerned, Christmas is coming early, and ain't nothing going to rain on my Star Wars parade. I'll be at the 11 15 screening tomorrow night, and we'll have a review for you next week. On Monday, Universal released the trailer for The Fate of the Furious, the eighth entry in the Fast and the Furious franchise. We'd show the trailer here, but it's a full three minutes and 17 seconds long, so we'll just put a link up at the end of the nerdy news. But it looks pretty much exactly as you would expect it to look. Action? Check. Cars? Check. An overuse of the word family to constantly hit you over the head with the fact that it's the theme of the whole series? Check. At eight movies deep, people love this franchise. The evidence? Well, aside from the fact that they keep making them, this trailer immediately broke the record for most views in the first 24 hours, with 139 million, dethroning Beauty and the Beast, which only got to hold that top spot for a month. And you know what? I'm in. Because at some point, the powers that be decided to stop making movies about drag racing and car culture and started making outlandish Mission Impossible movies with cars and worse acting. But even with all the plot holes and the ridiculous premise that Vin Diesel is an actor, I find myself more entertained with each entry. And this one's got Charlize Theron. How? I don't know, and that's my point. The inexplicable charm of these movies keeps us coming back to the point where even Academy Award winning actress Charlize Theron is like, sure, why not? Though now that I think about it, if I'm gonna see Charlize in a car movie, I'd prefer an Italian job sequel. In any case, The Fate of the Furious opens April 14th, at which point we'll begin wondering what play on words they'll use for the ninth movie title. In superhero movie news, yesterday The Hollywood Reporter broke the news that the Harley Quinn spin-off movie is officially going to happen and that it will be based on the comic book Gotham City Sirens and not Birds of Prey as many had believed. David Ayer confirmed this on his Twitter account yesterday and included a picture of Harley Quinn with Catwoman and Poison Ivy. We all knew this was coming since Margot Robbie stole the show in Suicide Squad, but what I didn't see coming was that they invited David Ayer back to direct this one too. Now, yeah, Suicide Squad was one of the top performers at the box office this year, but let's not pretend that it was a good movie. In fact, let's not pretend that it wasn't an incoherent mess and that David Ayer's direction had everything to do with that. We all went to see that movie because the marketing was so good that we had to see for ourselves whether it really sucked that bad. And guess what? It did! Keep the marketing team from Suicide Squad and give them all huge raises, but David Ayer? Dude. You got a lot to prove this time, and I, for one, am not optimistic. This week, Entertainment Weekly released their annual year-end best and worst of 2016 double issue. EW provides a pretty in-depth look back at the year in a variety of categories, but here are the highlights. Best music was Lemonade by Beyonce. Best TV show, OJ Made in America. Didn't see it. Best movie, La La Land, which I really need to see this weekend after I see Rogue One twice. And Entertainer of the Year, Deadpool himself, Ryan Reynolds. Not surprising, though, at this point, I'm experiencing a little Deadpool overload. But I'm sure after a break in 2017, I'll be ready for more of Mr. Pool in 2018. Next week, we'll be giving you our year-end picks with a nerdy pop end-of-year special, so keep an eye out for that. Finally, a bit of sad news. Yesterday, legendary TV daddy Alan Thicke passed away at the age of 69. Now, this is a weird one for me because Alan Thicke was one of my TV dads growing up. It was him as Jason Seaver from Growing Pains, Stephen Keaton from Family Ties, and Cliff Huxtable from The Cosby Show, but we don't talk about that anymore. In 2003, I had the surreal opportunity to actually meet Alan Thicke when he was hosting a gala I helped produce, and he was legitimately one of the nicest, coolest people. He told some stories backstage, and on stage he sang some of the famous theme songs he'd written over the years, like The Facts of Life and Different Strokes. Oddly, he didn't write the Growing Pains theme song. Anyway, Thick passed away after suffering a heart attack while playing hockey with his son. Our thoughts and prayers go out to his family. That's it for the nerdy news today. Make sure you click that subscribe button on YouTube and check out Nerdy Pop the Podcast and subscribe to that as well. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Nerdy Pop Show and check out nerdypopshow.com for all the latest in pop nerdum. Until next time, stay nerdy and stay poppy. Bye bye. Yeah.